Welcome, everyone, to what is sure to be something. Uh, we're gonna do a little, a little thing, kind of off the beaten path of our ongoing Spelljammer campaign with these two lovely gentlemen here, Drew and Dan Mudcat and Danatosh. Welcome, lads, my mustachioed brothers. Look at you. <laughs> You're so damn handsome. And Drew, I, I, I did... I don't know, fawn over you when you posted it on Twitter, but the haircut is just, it's so good. Oh, yeah. It's good, right? It's so good. It's good. It's good. Three, three years was enough for me. I had to, had to do it. Had to be done. What made you decide to, to do it? Like, what was the deciding factor? Oh, I just woke up and thought it was time for a haircut. <laughs> just <laughs> was like, really all right. It. That's it. That's you, amazing. You get tired of dealing with it long yes. enough. Wow. Well, it's kind of like, that. I've always been like that anyway. You wake up one day and be like, yeah, let's change something. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, after three years of having long hair, I was like, yeah, I'm done. Now's the time. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I love it. Well, um, as you can see, our chaotic gremlin cat is not with us today. Uh, she's traveling and apparently is in Seattle now, so that's great. Good that she got there uh, safe and sound, but we are going to take our time to do a bit of a one-shot background look into how AAA and Helene met each other, uh, and then do a little adventuring, and that's that's that'll be the whole that'll be the whole day. Uh, keep in mind, we are going to keep the levels at six. Not going to backtrack on anything on this, just because we want to keep it easy. And next week, we will proceed with our regularly scheduled uh, Spelljammer campaign content things. Should you decide that these beautiful gentlemen uh, deserve your love, adoration, and support, you can do so uh, by doing the following things. You can donate for them to do better in the game, which uh, is there listed on the screen. $5 for a reroll, $10 for a nat 20, uh, $15 for insight, where you can get a little look into the character's brain space, $20 for a draw from the deck of many. Please do be sure to denote who you are uh, wanting to influence in this you can always give me nat 20s as well just just in case <laughs> don't do that no. guys. don't don't do that no, you cannot. <laughs> please you absolutely <laughs> can and i wholeheartedly suggest it the next thing that you can do to earn them a, a free nice little nat 20 there is that you can take this little linky link to the tweet and retweet that uh, and uh, for every 10 of those, we'll, we'll we'll throw out a random one to a player at the table who maybe hasn't gotten one yet. Um, yeah, that's good. And there's no real recap to do here. So neither of you just get one off the bat. That's, yeah, that's it. So that's the thing. I mean, maybe I should have a command for this. Where's Pine? I know, that's why it says one shot. We're doing cats away, the, the boys will play. And that's, that's what we're doing. We're doing a little one shot uh, on the back end here. So enjoy, Word. strap in. Uh, yeah, with that, I suppose we will we'll take it in to uh, our first little thing here. Uh, thankfully for us, we've already spent some time here on the Rock of Brawl. Now, uh, for our players who are a little bit familiar with this, we're going to find ourselves in a bar where all good one shots begin. Mm -hmm. But in a really, really nice one called the Man O War. Like, kind of maneuver Ooh. everything over in that direction and uh, set it up for people at home to be able to see the map a little better. The Man O War is uh, over, over here uh, next to the Lake of Brawl. And I'll kind of drag everyone in that general direction. And it has a fantastic view of the lake itself. Now, uh, it has a high reputation of elegance and safety that even the rulers of Brawl have visiting diplomats stay here when perhaps their areas are too full. Uh, there's a strict dress code in the dining room. Both weapons and armor are prescribed from the patrons, but the bar is a little bit more, uh, well, fancy free. Uh, and this is where we will find ourselves, at the bar, at a table, with Helene, who is sitting across from a gentleman. He's about mid-40s, human, slick black hair running back, this silk embroidered red vest, and a long golden chain of a pocket watch dangling from the side. He has a perfectly kept goatee. 
This is Vincent Hammond, someone who Helene has probably begun working with rather recently at this point. A broker of sorts, someone who reaches out to those who wish to remain unnamed but have various jobs for those operating in the gray spaces of space. Vincent sits down next to Helene, bringing a drink. Helene, what, what would you what would you request to drink here? Mm, probably something of the mead variety, actually. Something really? a little sweet, but also kind of rugged. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Something, something probably made by the establishment themselves. Mm. And they do have space bees where they can get the honey and make some kind of mead from it. Uh, if you're not familiar it, with space does bees. Does it glitter at all? Does it? Oh, of course it glitters. <laughs> okay, yes. All right, cool. Space bees without glittery honey? Are they even really space bees? Helene, Helene's a, a rugged woman, and she does she does things, you know, a little bit more rough around the edges, but she doesn't look it. She's very classy on the outside. So, you know, you got to you gotta sprinkle it up a little bit, you know? Yeah, and on that note, let's go ahead and get a, a physical description of Helene. Remember, this will be Helene from a few years prior to our ongoing adventure. Mm -hmm. Would there be any changes to how they look? Yeah. Um, so Helene normally is in a very elegant, very fitted sort of pantsuit kind of uniform. Not quite pantsuit, but very like how a pantsuit would fit you know, a woman of class and stature. Um, she would normally be in something that looks new and, and you know, perfectly fashioned specifically, specifically for her. Around this time, before, you know, maybe some jobs hit her table well and she's just trying to make a name for herself, um, trying to come up in this, uh, this world on this, on this rock that we call the rock. Um... <laughs> Uh, she basically has the version of that that she either got from somebody else or got off like at a very good discount. Meaning it's it's trying to be fancy. It's like if you went to buy a suit from I don't know I don't I don't really buy suits too often, uh, but somewhere that is not necessarily tailored. It's uh you, you got this. It fits, but only because it you fall under the window of size ranges. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and Helene, uh, a rather tall uh, space elf, as it mm -hmm. were. Yeah. Does she have all the the same like piercings and jewelry as well? No. Um. I would say that she has um a bunch of ear piercings for sure, like down down the sides of her ears. Um. But a lot of the face jewelry is kind of not there. Maybe a little stud in the nose, nothing crazy. Um, it's very much, she's trying to make a name for herself, but also trying to also stay a little under the radar. Mm. Um, you know, she she had a, because uh, at this point, she's not too old. Like she was never really that old, especially for, for a space elf. Um, but she's she's been around for a little bit and has, has lived a little bit, so you know. She does things out of pure um, impulse sometimes, and she's she's got a few. Okay, excellent. And you're sitting down across from this rather posh-looking gentleman wearing very fine clothes, looking around the rest of the Man of War, which is very similarly dressed. These are where the hoity-toities of all around uh, the jamming space will come to grab a drink here. And so Vincent Hammond, he settles in with his fine glass of space red wine because all things in space are space things mm -hmm. mm, yes <clears throat> Helene now you've come f well recommended by a couple of the other brokers in the area for this particular mission and I would have you do it maybe expand your influence a little bit our benefactor is looking for something specific off of a, a derelict vessel floating out in the uh, asteroid belt uh, about a day's sail from here. Uh, it is a, a derelict nautiloid, uh, you know, uh, an illithid ship. It's been floating around in the area apparently for a little bit of time and perhaps has been picked over already, but our 
benefactor is hoping that the relic he seeks that should be stored on board is still available for you to acquire. Questions? Hmm. What, how, what's the time frame? Oh, time frame. Um, let's see. Day out will give you half a day, day on board, sounds right. And hmm. a day's back, three. Ah. So a rest job is what you're saying. Um, no, well, of course not. Do you need additional preparation time, Helene? I've always no. known you to be rather snappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it'll get done. It'll, I have no problem. It'll get done. It's just, you know, I'm going to need a maybe a little extra on top just because it's going to be have to be done fast. And yeah, I'm assuming you want it clean. So uh, it's going to be a little clean. Uh, it's going to probably just be me doing stuff. Uh, I, I got to do I got to I got to cover all the costs of the tools and whatnot. No, Are uh, you... you won't have to. This will be your no, first uh, uh, job where you are actually being given some help. And that comes in the mm. form of uh, a ship's captain, ship and jammer acquired there. Whatever tools necessary on board, quite short of, I would think, maybe explosives. And an additional pair of hands, mechanical as they are. And, well, I suppose we should probably include him in the conversation as well. Um, Triple A! Just kind of kicks his head over to the bar where we see our friend Triple A waiting for the signal. Triple A, uh, what are you drinking? And what do you look like these days? Oh, I think... I think that uh, he looks mostly exactly the same. Given that he's a mm -hmm. he's a mechanical in nature, still has the nice patina with the the copper. Although the copper may be a little bit shinier, as this is a uh, is prior in years, maybe. Uh, probably his his duster and hat are also a little bit uh, less worn in. As he uh, he's a uh, he slams back a a shot of what's probably just straight ethanol <laughs> uh, <laughs> into that into that bottomless pit of a stomach saving it for later um as he uh i'm just gonna assume that the stool spin or the spinny oh, yeah, types absolutely he's just gonna spin himself as he like also like flourishes the back of his duster just <laughs> as he spins around uh come on boss as he right. makes his way over there with the uh, now he has spurs i don't know if he had spurs before but he has <laughs> spurs, now. spurs now okay <laughs> All right, so some years ago, AAA had spurs. What happened to them, I suppose we'll never know, but there are spurs there now. He goes, ah, always with the flourish. Yes, please, come sit. AAA, this is Helene. Helene will be yep. your lead for this particular endeavor. I am a pleasure. <laughs> um, tip, tip his hat. I, I, I don't know. But you must not have heard everything about me. I usually work alone. Oh, well, uh, uh, um, sorry to, uh, inconvenience here, but, uh, I am mighty handy. In fact, mm. I got multiple as he puts up his arms and, like, <laughs> robotically, like, splits them into multiple hands. <laughs> and spins them around, you know, like, and does a bunch of, like, oh, mechanical. Oh, see, <laughs> Helene, we've even sprung for more than a pair of assisting hands. Hmm. Well, I, I guess I don't want to upset the uh almighty benefactor no in this case you really do not and that's why i come to the next thing first time you're getting a ship first time you're getting extra pairs of hands and assistance and the first time that this is one of those by any means necessary you mean uh it doesn't have to be clean Helene. Mm, I, um, I uh, actually don't have a problem with that. All right. Ah, shocked I am. Now, <clears throat> I do believe that the Moon Dancer, your captain's ship, is out on the docks. But should you have any further questions, please ask them while I'm here. Uh, is there is there a specific do you have a description of this thing we're looking for ah see ever the smart woman yes it is a stone it will be purplish in color roughly 
half a foot long and half that in width. And you might know it as something called an Iun Stone. Something that can store magics amongst it and can be utilized rather easily in the correct magical hands. Now, our benefactor has assured me that it is not a dangerous thing for you to pick up, but he does request that you do not utilize it. I, I would I would never. I would never. I wouldn't even know how. Well, I'm sure you'd figure it out. Again, smart woman. Um, yes. So this stone. Oh, and if you find anything else aboard, this I think you might find very valuable, Helene. Um, of everything aboard, should you find anything valuable, it's yours. Whatever you can pick up, carry, shove onto the moon dancer, and convince your captain to take all yours. The derelict will be eliminated in three days' time. Oh. Uh, triple A, is it? Uh, uh, yes. I hope you're pretty strong and can carry some stuff. Well, I, uh, <clears throat> I've been known to lift a thing or two, but, uh, do you have anything particular you're looking for? I should keep an eye out. Mmm. Do you have anything going on up in here that has any torp type of like mm, how do I put this sensitively? Um do you are know you, how to value things? Are you asking if I can calculate basic numbers? But do you know what those numbers are? Like if I were to show you and whips out um uh, whips out a a dagger that uh Heavily encrusted, um, looks very fancy. Looks looks like something that is uh, made of gold and and lined with with uh, jade and and a few other seemingly expensive things. Would you be able to be able to spot the value of something like this? Well, should I roll an insight check for this? Sure, why not? Sure, yeah, yeah, I can give you something. <laughs> Good 17. That's good. Okay. So you probably noticed that most of what's on the dagger is pretty fake. Well, I mean, it, uh, it's a mighty fine dagger. It looks fancy, uh, shines nicely. But uh, if you don't mind me saying, uh, it's not worth a steaming pile of cow shit. Space looks cow shit, the... right? Sorry, space cow shit. <laughs> My mistake. Look, Helene looks over at the at the fancy man and says, All right, we're gonna be just fine. Right. Well, <clears throat> seems like you can use whatever you make off of this job to um get yourself a nicer dagger then. Uh right. Uh, I have a meeting in oh three minutes. Uh the what was that supposed to mean? Tab is on <laughs> me here and uh, enjoy your drink. I expect you back in three days with the stone, or, well, we'll find you. What? Uh, uh mm, um, okay. Don't worry, he says that to everyone. Hmm, okay. It's good to know. Um, I don't like people finding me, you know what I mean? Well, then bring the stone back three days, don't blow up on the derelict, and uh, you'll be fine. I'm going to go. Noted. Enjoy your time here on the rock. See you in three days. He will yep. see ya. Get up. Uh, look at his little pocket watch. Give you a nod, and exit to one of the private rooms of the Man of War. Mm -hmm. Well, then it uh, <clears throat> looks like it's just you and me. Uh, I know you're uh, not accustomed to having a partner, but I'll try to stay out of your way. Uh, and uh, I'm just here to help. You're the boss. Um, hmm. Never been a boss before. This should be interesting. Um, is there? I don't really know much about uh, robots. Is that way? You're mechanical, right? You got a. I assume a working mechanical brain. You seem to know some things. Can I? Can I? All right, I'm gonna be forward. All right, I'm just gonna ask. <laughs> what are you? 
Well, uh, you see, I am what they call an autonome. Uh, don't quite remember my original origins, but uh, spent a fair bit of time as a uh, working in the carnival. Uh, one of those, uh, one of those little shoot shooting games, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or you know, so uh, I was the gun. Hmm. But uh, so you can uh, shoot. Well, I would. Uh, I think so. He's gonna flip out his duster to reveal his guns in the middle of this fancy place. Mm. You do definitely draw some eyes, uh, especially some of those on the end of like monocles, right? Little little glasses. He, he tips his hat to everybody who looks individually, <laughs> just one at a time. Takes about thirty seconds to go through the room, and uh... ma'am, sir, ma'am. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> interesting. That's uh, that's something that might come in handy. Um, also, does, if, you need, uh, if you need to rig one of those ring toss games, I know how to do that too. Oh, oh, okay, interesting. Um, as 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 all the people sort of stare at him, or at least look at him, and he's and he's tipping his hat. Do I uh does does Helene see any any valuables somewhat within reach? Uh, on the table or on Triple A's person. Uh, uh, not on Triple H, just anything around Ooh. from maybe the, the richer people. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Everyone's got, like, nice watches or um, chains, nice, you know, monocles, things of that nature, some jewels, gems, bracelets. Like, the room is full of, you know, the fanciest of pantses. Mm. Does anybody look um, more strange? maybe stunned or startled than the others to see these uh to see these weapons uh yes there is a a woman with tightly bound uh blonde hair stacked upon her head who is looking with what seems to be opera spectacles down mm -hmm, directly mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. the guns with her hand placed over her her chest and her fine you know strips of space pearls uh that she is wearing there she's in a fine red gown and seems to probably be getting ready to go to a space opera Mm. Mm, maybe wearing some uh, bracelets and such. Mm, I, I yeah, assume. absolutely. Uh, as as these weird looks are hap happening, Helene kind of looks over to her, and she seems obviously very astraught or something. And uh, and she goes, "Oh, oh, oh. ma'am, it's, it's fine. He's here. He's just a protector." And and it, just trying to like calm her and grabbing her hand and and you know trying to be a, a calming a, another woman trying to calm calm the person as she tries to slip uh, a bracelet off um and, and you know Helene, pocket she, it she not looking at you still observing the weapon uh you know for a moment seems distracted until she looks down at you and realizes what you're wearing and what you look like and she's oh <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Damn. You can absolutely Damn. roll a sleight of hand check, however, for you do have the moment. A thirteen. Oh boy. I was gonna like if it was if it was good. I was gonna give it to you. Fitting. Fourteen on the die, and she snatches her <laughs> hand away from you just before you're able to get one of the nicer pearl bracelets off of her wrist. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be fine. Now, please, <laughs> I'm sure your parents, you have parents, right, taught you about the uh, importances of personal space. I, I was just trying to help. I was just trying to help a little bit. And, Don't uh, make me uh, get you the manager. Have a good day. <laughs> okay, everything's fine. Have a good day. I am having an excellent day. Thank you. And she will turn around <laughs> back to the bar. Walks away. Turns around. Walks back to AAA. Rich people are kind of the worst. Yeah, it seems like they were a little bit upset there. Uh, nice try, by the way. Uh, I mean, you know, it. it I usually rich people are pretty easy. I will say, um, but you know, sometimes. I'm I'm still learning. I'm still trying to figure things out. Hey, listen, picking the moment is half the battle. So, uh, pretty good timing, if you ask me. I like your, I like your style. We can we can, maybe we'll talk more after this and get some stuff done. You know what I'm saying? Uh, always looking for work. All right. 
Okay, now let's 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 think about what we are doing here. I don't I don't normally I don't normally work with people. Are are you are you pretty easy to are you easy going? Do you like your own style? Like is this something that I'm gonna have to worry about? Well, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I would say I have a style per se. Uh mostly just uh shooting things blowing things up setting things on fire causing distractions that's right. a that's about it i don't know if that's a style but uh if that it's works a, for you that's a certain skill set that's a style i like especially especially when the time the moment comes like god if i could we could just blow this whole place up oh my god i hate everything here uh, I mean, I do know a guy who specializes in explosives. I'm I'm just thinking out loud, just daydreaming here. I know it's it's a fantasy. I want to just blow this whole place to kingdom come and well, take all their stuff. But it's just a fantasy. We don't have to do that. I get the impulse, but you know, if in case you change your mind, I'm seeing a lot of load bearing pillars around the room here that you place a couple of charges. Uh, you know, in a strategic location, this place comes down like a like a like some dominoes. Interesting. I like uh, I like the way you think. I wouldn't have thought of that. The waiter Probably crush everyone inside though. Yeah. The waiter who's come by to pick up the empty glasses goes, um, <laughs> any what what do you what are you looking at? Drinks. Okay, mind your business. No, we're fine. Uh, no. All right. Um. Shoo. <laughs> he walks away quickly. <laughs> Well, should we, um, uh, what's, what's our, what's our move here? What's our next play? Well, I guess we got to go. Do you know, do you know this ship, ship captain person? Do you, do you know where we're going to meet? Do, do I know the ship captain already? I'm already acquainted. You are not acquainted, uh, with Elena Sartell as of yet, but you were given the name of the ship, the moon dancer and told that it would hmm. be in the docks. Well, I don't. I don't know much more than you, I don't think, but uh, we can make our way to the dock, see if we can't find that ship. Go from there. All right. I guess that's uh, I guess that's our next move. I don't really. This is all. This is all pretty new to me. I mean, there's probably a couple of nice houses around here if you want to stop and, you know, do some shopping uh, real quick on the way. Yeah. Uh, Helene. Helene makes no facial expression, but her ears perk a little bit hearing that <laughs> okay all right it's a nice country club right there's got to be some fancy houses right <laughs> there's some cars in the parking lot there are quite a lot of uh nice abodes in this area this is where the uh uh the high and mighty do live in the uh this side of the are there rock. what 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 would be a, a mode of transportation that may or may not be parked outside uh a spaceship so <laughs> here uh let's see vehicle wise i think you've got a oh there's actually a star moth outside uh the star moth you've seen previously uh not in this lifetime but in uh, a different one where uh mm. yeah you fought one of these oh is it huge is it big yeah it's a ship oh god Oh jeez, I was thinking of something just to you know. Oh, ride like down a to the power dock. scooter or something. Yeah, something oh. something that rich people might have used to sure. to shuttle their rich asses over here. I don't know. <laughs> All right, you go ahead and roll me a perception check as you exit okay. the bar, and we'll see if you find anything to you know maybe speed along your journey towards uh towards the docks itself. We'll see how that goes. Right. All right. As we end up outside, uh, oops, on the rock of Brawl here. What did you roll me? Okay, a 15. Uh, 15. Yeah, 15, not bad. Um, excellent, as my roll 20 crashes. Uh, so from here, what you would be able to see outside is that there's not like horse and buggy or anything like that. This is mm -hmm. a fantasy space type thing. Uh, there, so there's not like hoverboards or things like that. Um, so what you'd probably have 
is people pulling like chairs, like sedan chairs. Uh, so you'd have, you know, men and women that will have these little two wheeled benches, right? That they will pull mm. from place to place. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So let's go. Let's go outside. Let's uh, let's let's head on down. Yeah, and uh, getting my stuffy in here anyway. As he's looking yeah. around, all these people stare at him. <laughs> it's a bit much. I don't. I'm not a fan. Uh, in fact, I, I'm, if we stay in here any longer, I might start puking. Um, okay, so we w I w walk outside, and uh, I spot this uh, the, one of these benches, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, <laughs> um, I, ta I, I turned to I turned to AAA and go, "Hey, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a distraction. I'm just gonna." Go do something real quick. Uh, can you you want to grab us? You want to grab us a ride? Well, I could uh, <clears throat> I could try. I don't know if I'm familiar with this model, but I'm sure I could figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, I'll I'll make sure nobody sees you and uh, meet me meet me just uh, around the corner. Yeah. Yep. We'll do. He's gonna back up stealthily, <laughs> disappear into the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Helene grabs some sort of box or something to create, you know, just a little bit of a height and stage. Why not? She's already pretty tall, but whatever. Sure. And, uh, uh, <laughs> um, are there people outside? Like a decent amount of people? Uh, th of the bar space, there's probably a couple of people that are out here either coming or going. Um, but okay. this is not a crowded area. Again, you're, okay. you're kind of up in this, you know, more open spaces of um, these manor houses. Uh, sure. So you're not towards the uh, the middle city yet. You're still in the upper city. Sure. Okay. So uh, um, she says, "Here ye, here ye. I have uh, I have an announcement to make. Um, as you all may know, there are some wonderful, wonderful sights to see around these parts." Maybe not here, maybe not there, maybe, well, and she grabs uh, just anybody that walks by and uh, pulls pulls them up on the stage. Uh, I, I will I will let I will let Joel figure what out what is going to happen here. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> pulls pulls them up on the stage and says, "Well, maybe some pull down, pull down pulls down their pants and some underwear, and then screws off." <laughs> Or tries to, at least. <laughs> is a, a rather large <laughs> gentleman in what seems to be a very old uh, military uniform, uh, and he's got these large mustaches. He's like, oh, no, no, I never. How dare you? <laughs> okay, so you've created a distraction. You attempt to scurry <laughs> off uh, with people shouting at you. Um, <laughs> AAA, what are you doing while this is happening? I guess I'm gonna find some sort of uh, uh, bench that's hot wireable. <laughs> I don't know how these work. <laughs> they're they're physically pulled by people. Oh, by people. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I'm gonna I'm gonna force those people to pull a bench at gunpoint. <laughs> at gunpoint? Yeah, just I'll keep it under the coat, but you know, just uh, imp implied violence. You know what I mean? Just one of these. Yeah. Okay, go. What if I Don't make a big deal of this, but just uh, you know, just one ride, and then I'll be out of your hair. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. And it, <laughs> this kind of slight, um, I got probably half orcish man goes, oh uh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, please don't shoot me. Yeah, trust me, it's not worth it. All right. <laughs> and he goes, uh, hold on, and goes trundling away, pulling you in this, you know, kind of like. Little bench thing on wheels. Uh, hey, just uh, pull up around the corner there. I got away from my boss. It goes flying around the corner, skidding, skrr, stops. Um, right? And here comes boss running down <laughs> the street, being tailed by some fancy people hoisting up their dresses to, uh, uh, you know, apprehend the ne'er do well. Uh, hop in. We got a ride. And she 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 hops in and does a little salute and uh, 
Let's go. Uh, uh, mush. <laughs> Not a dog. Uh, and he goes straight. He starts that. running. And just like do, 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 do. click, yeah, click, click, click. This is all right. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, Triple, I didn't catch you your got, name. What was your name? You got something with a person? What? Uh, uh, well, it was all that was available. I mean, yeah, you're probably. Don't right. worry, he's cool. Uh, okay, all right. Thanks. Yes, Wait, definitely cool? cool. Yeah. Uh huh. Cool. Uh, why? Why are they chasing you? And you like look behind you, and they're still running. Cause he's just a guy <laughs> pulling a chair. They can keep up. Uh, I, I don't know. They're just they're they're mean. They're mean people. <laughs> I know how rich <laughs> people are. Them. Rich people, man. They're mean. Yes, absolutely. And he's continuing to run here. I think eventually. It doesn't take overly long for them to just, you know, tire out. Uh, but you do, as like our camera lets, you know, pans away to you going into the middle city and down towards the docks. We do see some of them, including that one woman with the coiled up blonde hair and red dress on, talking to someone who could maybe be a manager or, uh, you know, one of the upper city guards about uh, your shenanigans and perhaps giving a description of you to them i'm sure nothing mm. nothing bad will ever come of that for what crime pantsing somebody they have <laughs> they have strict rules against pantsing here it's kind of wild <laughs> <laughs> out of everything else that's like a gray area solidly here on the rock pantsing that's however it. is that's not the, that's, the line. <laughs> that's the line so uh timothy who he lets you know his name is the half orc yeah. driver timothy. of your your little sedan chair there uh or that was the manager never mind <laughs> goes uh dragging you down into the lower city and towards the docks um where you can see various different ships parked there uh, but the one that you are looking for is definitely very blatantly named across the side uh, of its wooden boards, the Moon Dancer there. See a small flump wearing a captain's hat and uh, Elena Sartell, who I will bring up for this again, since it's probably been a while since we've seen what she looks like. Uh, waiting aboard, arms crossed, and looking kind of nervous? There's Elena for you. Ooh. Yeah, right? Red hair, um, uh, carries a, a curved blade at her side. Helene blushes a little bit. She is rather attractive. Um, yeah. yeah, and so she waits there with, uh, well, our, our flumpy friend Flapjack, who we have also not seen in quite some time. And he seems to be trying to console her over whatever might be happening here in the next, I don't know, few days of in-game time with his little tentacle patting her on the shoulder. Timothy pulls up uh, at the end of the dock here and goes, ah, that will be, well, I think probably two silver pieces considering how fast you made me run. <laughs> You're a funny guy as AAA gets off the... <laughs> The wagon's still flipping his gun in his fingers. <laughs> uh, I mean, I need to eat. Uh, yeah, we all do. The uh, yeah, there's a there's a there's a lady with a big blonde thingy, my bob. That I just I don't know why she does that. Um, she's a friend of mine, and she said that it's on her. Go get it from her. Um, all right. <clears throat> Pleasure doing business with you. If you would ever like to ride on Timothy's tricycle once again, you can find me in the lower city most of the time. Listen, just the, just the cojones on this guy to ask for money when he's being held at gunpoint. I know. He's got to <laughs> eat, man. He does have to eat. So. Um. Yeah. So you're parked outside the Moon Dancers. They have not seen you or recognize you as being the people that they're waiting for, so it's up to you on what you would like to do next. Uh, <laughs> uh, Helene would like to walk up to the captain and uh, give a little, hey, um, you come here often? <laughs> what? Oh, I mean, yes, this is my primary port of call. Um, I'm Ooh. sorry, who are you and... You didn't really ask permission to board the ship, did you? That's kind of I, seen as bad manners. 
I just I'm I, I'm just asking if I can maybe you know uh, take you out for a nice space meet sometime. You're 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 quite attractive. Oh, sorry, I'm on a job right now. I'm waiting for some people. Uh, perhaps oh. another time. Who can I ask who you're waiting for? Uh, no, I was just uh, told I should wait here for what seems to be two people, uh, and we will be heading out off the docks as soon as they arrive. So please, if you don't mind, taking a step back off of my ship. They didn't give you, like, a description? Or you just, you're just waiting for two random people? It could be anybody. Who trusts somebody like that? Well, they would obviously, you know, present themselves as, you know, Working for the same people that I work for, and then why am I justifying myself to you? Get off of my ship! Hey, 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 hey! I'm sorry. We got off on the wrong foot. I do apologize. I would just like to say that I, I, I think you're kind of cute, and uh, I don't know if you're in the girls, but I, if you, if you want to go, like maybe after you're done with your job. Or maybe... Did you just finger maybe, quote my job? Maybe we could do it while you're on the job. I'm so... No, what? Who? Can, can I look at the name of the ship? Is it is it displayed anywhere? Oh, yeah, it's painted <laughs> on the side of it. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> boss, uh, <clears throat> I think this is the this is the ship. Uh, what, uh, what, what ship? It, what ship? She's obviously distracted by the. You know the, the uh, moon dancer as he as he <laughs> gestures. gestures broadly to the name. <laughs> oh um. Oh wait, where are those people that you're waiting for? Um. Oh. Yeah. Right. I'm not sure that I want to have been waiting on you anymore. I mean, Hammond sent you. Is, yeah, it looks at AAA. Is that his name? I don't. I don't remember. He was a fancy man. Yeah, that 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 would be the one, uh, uh, ma'am. Uh, permission to come aboard? You yes. This one, however, I've yet to decide. Well, well, hey, listen. Well, if, if the boss can't come on, I can't come on. Midas the aboard. All right. Well, if we're going to be working together, I'm sorry. What is your name, Space Elf Lady? Hi, I'm Helene. Great. Nice to meet you. So can we just, you know, talk something over first and maybe not have any workplace harassment? There is some things that are not gray here on the wa on the rock, and that's one of them. That Very strict him. workplace harassment laws. I mean, we could do it later after the job. We don't have to do it now. I mean, How just about we saying... get to know each other? Maybe we survive this mission, which if you haven't heard, and maybe if Hammond left it out, is aboard a, oh, I don't know, derelict nautiloid ship. You know, illithids. You know, those terrifying creatures that wander around space and enslave other creatures. I've been there, done that. I don't, whatever. I'll, I'll I'll do my job if you do your job. That's all I'm saying. Why is no one just understanding the actual gravity of this situation here? That's fine. Yes, you, gnome, uh, aboard. Come, now. Um, we do need to make our way out. I was assured that if we do not get in and out in three days, they're just going to blow the damn thing up, and we don't get paid. Well, we better get moving then. That's right. That's so. three whole days. We got, we got so much time for... Cuddling and, and and talking and stuff. I'm sorry. Do you? <laughs> she she looks over at Triple A's like, are you? Are they always like this? Well, I'm not sure. We just met, but uh... oh, fantastic! So we're going with a half cocked <laughs> crew. None of us know each other, and we're sailing out into oh. dangerous space where we may get worms in our ears and succumb to seromorphosis. Morphosis. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Morphosis. What? No, uh, and I'm gonna have to stop you right there. I'm not gonna abide that kind of talk because never in my life have I let anyone accuse me of being half cocked. <laughs> I am full cocked all of the time as he pulls his guns out and cocks them. Just pulls the hammers back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he is the best, the very best. You just met him. How? D you know what? No questions. Get aboard. Oh, we're getting along just fine. <laughs> Get aboard. We have some supplies and. Uh, 
we need to set off Flapjack! Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> we're heading out now. Oh, good. Uh, hello? Flapjack here. Uh, I will be your spell jammer. Um, I take control of the ship and sail it about. If you're not familiar with how spell jamming works, it works with my brain and my tentacles. Uh, just, um... You know, make yourself comfortable. It'll just be the four of us, I believe. Uh, no other crew aboard, right, Elena? And Hammond was very clear on this. It's just us, so it's going to be a little bit slow going, sales-wise. But we've got open cabins for you. <clears throat> you will be in separate cabins. So she looks. She looks pointedly over at Helene. <laughs> Where it looks looks around, um, for no reason at all. Where's the captain's quarters? Should you have need of anything, my quarters are. And she, she points to the aft deck, you know, aft castle, on the main deck, through that door there, which will be firmly locked. I just asking, just sorry, just asking. All right, uh, Flapjack, take us out of here. Oh, all right, ma'am. Salutes with one of his little tentacles, and the uh, moon dancer begins to lift up and away from the docks. As we kind of shuffle off, uh, <clears throat> as things are happening, the uh, Triple H just kind of sidebars with Helene. You know, fucking half cocked. Who does she think she is? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I, uh, I think she's into me. You know, I was getting a distinct vibe that she was not. But what do I know? I'm a machine. Yeah. What? What? It's super clear. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, the, the intricacies of the uh, the biological condition might be eluding me here. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go over that in some time. I think. We'll, we'll you know you got a lot to learn. You know, not being you know humanoid and stuff or whatever organic, whatever you want to say. Well, then I will I will follow your lead. I'll teach you everything you need to know. <laughs> That's gonna be great. <laughs> Everybody, she's not a pervert. She just uh huh. She's got a she's got a weakness. Here comes Sounds the like justification. Weakness. Here it comes. Yeah, sounds like something a pervert would say. <laughs> Maybe a little. Oh my god! All right, as we pull away from the Rock of Brawl, a days long travel between here and this supposed you know derelict ship amongst some asteroids. Um. There's not really much here to do other than sit and wait, or if you have any conversations you want to have, now is a great time. As a note, you do all have, including me, a natural 20, should you like to spend it at some point in time. Big thank you to Guild for that. And uh, yeah, we are just traveling along the ways towards what is probably a pretty treacherous uh, seek and grab. So anything that you would like to do aboard the ship before arriving at your location I, I think triple A'll just, <clears throat> just try to casually have conversations with Helene here and there uh, so boss uh, <clears throat> now that we're somewhat acquainted uh, how'd you uh, how'd you come by this line of work anyway I mean I didn't really have a choice I mean it's all always but this is this is life I mean, I've never done anything like this. This is this is a bit much, but I mean, I come from, let's just say, a place where, and this is just how it is. I mean, the Rock has been home for a, for a long time. I wasn't born here or anything, but I, I got dropped off here one day, and well, I've had friends that taught me lots of things and taught me how to pickpocket and steal and stuff like that but they've all gone to do like bigger and better things and i just thought it was time for me you know you know what i'm saying it's time for me to do something bigger and so then then i talked to found this this guy and he introduced me to that hammond's fancy fella dude and i just kind of well now we're here you know, i uh i know how that goes this one thing leads to another you I remember when I first stepped up to the big leagues, my big job. Uh, it's a 
It's something. It's something else. Once you get into the thick of it, so you ever. How, uh, how long you been doing this? Oh, I don't know. A few decades, maybe. Oh wow. Oh, maybe I got some stuff to learn from you. I mean, this is my yeah. first like big one. I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, that's not true. You seem to. You seem to know your way about. Uh, I mean, you're you. You seem like you got it all figured out, as it were. Uh, very poised. Uh, you know, I don't have to tell you, uh, you know, what it feels like to watch the steam rising out of a fresh bullet hole in the snow as someone's soul leaves their body. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, if it's anything like, you know, blood on a knife, maybe I, I kind of know, I don't know. I, I don't really do things with, with, gun. in fact, are your guns so your guns are made of metal right like that's correct okay you're made of metal yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah okay um are your guns part technically part of you are they the are you, is this your body oh not these particular guns but i am well equipped with a, a few upgrades as it were as he's going to open up his uh, mouth really wide for like a cannon to come out, oh. and his chest opens up and like a mini flamethrower is like shooting little flames out. Oh, no, 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 no flames on the ships. Oh, oh sorry, Captain. Jesus. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, I just figured because it was space and all, it wouldn't be a big deal. Wood still burns in space. You can tell right now you're in a little envelope of air, right? It will. Un under under her breath, you know what else burns? It's my passion. You, my <laughs> guy. Uh, to be fair, Captain, I actually don't breathe oxygen. Well, don't burn up the rest of ours. Fair enough. I don't really breathe too much oxygen. I mean, you know, I also don't. I don't. I, you know, I I have. I've seen a lot of these these guns, but we don't really we don't use too many guns where I'm from. I'm gonna be honest. Like, is this something that is this something common where wherever you come from? Like, do people just shoot each other all the time? Is it like, is it wild? What what? It... Well, I don't know about all the time, but uh, there's there's been a shooting or two at the carnival. Uh, things get out of hand, you know. Uh, someone steals a funnel cake or or. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, oh, you, you, you shoot people for funnel cake. Well, not me, but you know, a guy I know. Sure, I don't eat funnel cake. Oh. How many, how many, how many guys do you know? How many guys? Yeah, I don't know, uh, six, seven, maybe. Oh, okay, all right. I mean, I said I, count you. I don't know that you would identify as a guy here, but you know, maybe you'd make eight. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Captain I, I can do some stuff. Yeah. Oh, look at that! My friend's group is uh, growing exponentially. Hey, you're you're doing you're doing great. You're doing great. Do do you work with teams very often? Well, uh, <clears throat> I guess that's a yes and no. Occasionally, I'll pick up a job as a well, same as this case. You know, a hired hand, uh, sure. helping out where I can. Uh, I'm not really what you would call leadership material. So, uh, running a crew of my own, uh, all sounds enticing. I don't think that's for me. Uh. I don't really like the responsibility, you know? Mm hmm Yeah, I get that. I get that. And she, uh, uh, the, the mention of crew and sort of leadership sort of, uh, comes up. She tucks what, like, maybe the, maybe at the tip of an envelope is sticking out of her breast pocket, and she just tucks that back in. Pats a little bit. Yeah, I, um... This is not, it's not my first job with the crew. I, I will admit that, but I've never, you know, never been so good at leading people. So we'll just uh, say that hopefully because you're very capable, things will, things on this job will be just fine. Well, you know, I would hope so. Uh, I'll, like I said, you, you know, you're the, you're the, you're the expert here. I'm just going to, I'm just here to help. I'll stay out of your way. Uh, blow some stuff up if if necessary. Uh, you know, hold a taxi driver at gun, gunpoint. You know that kind of stuff. I do. Oh, yeah. I, by the way, that was brilliant. I uh, yeah. How else are you gonna get a free taxi ride? 
Yeah, I, I like it. I, I very much like it. That's the way. That's the way of the rock, and you know, that's just the way it goes. I, I, I know that like, there's a whole side of the rock I've never even thought about seeing, and they all are hoity-toity, blah 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 blah. I got lots of money, whatever. But most of the rock just be like that, and sometimes you just gotta you gotta either flow with the flow or, or I don't know, grind with the grind. I don't. Just yeah. how it goes. Well said. You're either you're either the man with the bullet hole in his chest in the snow, or you're the gun. What's this about snow? You keep bringing up snow. You keep. What, is there is there something to do with snow? Well, by uh, the way, what is snow? It's like frozen water. Falls from the sky. You never seen snow. No. You ever been off really. this rock? I mean, I was born off this rock, but I mean, most of my life is just here. Well, well, in some places, some some planets, there's uh, frozen water that falls from the sky. Hmm. It's pretty nice. It's like fluffy and white. Can you turn that into regular water? Well, I mean, I, su- I suppose you could. You apply a little heat. Hmm. Money-making opportunity. Hmm. Might have to visit one of these planets. And we don't we don't have we don't get that much water there uh in the city you know that's fair most of it's in the lake we i suppose we could uh get into the water business you get some of this snow you're talking about okay yeah, i like be, it be careful when you're asking for that because some people that uh you know there's a, there's a few different types i think mm. you gotta make sure you get the good stuff I can't help but have been overhearing your conversation. Um, now, crazy idea this. Why don't we take the water that is already belonging to the people, bottle it, and then sell it back to them? We what can are you, call some kind of monster? Something like Nestle or along those lines. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, Blake, can you shoot him? Or is that bad? <laughs> You just shoot him? I'm flying the ship, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> a terrible hey, idea. Hey, just listen, I don't, I don't, I don't know where you get that idea. Completely unethical. That's crazy. What is it? We ain't even got that water you're talking about. That's for yeah, the rich how, people. Everyone knows you can't put water into a bottle. That's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. The, the same, the same bottle you put mead into? No. Yeah, that's that's just that's just idiotic. Just gross. Well, I thought it might be a good idea, but all right, fine, I'll stay you stick, quiet. You stick the fly in the ship. Hey, aye, aye. Where this guy he went to water college or something? <laughs> <laughs> Flapjack will sullenly continue piloting your ship. <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying to become a water baron, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. All right. So. As time continues on here, eventually you do, after a day passes, come into view of an asteroid belt. And floating amongst that asteroid belt is the wreck of a nautiloid. A whole lot like that. Nautiloids are interesting shaped ships in that they have large shell-like carapaces and tentacles that protrude out from behind them much like the creatures that they are named for. Now, on approach here, uh, as you get closer and closer to the ship, uh, our new friend, Captain Sartell. Right, okay, well, definitely a derelict because if there were mind flayers aboard, they would have attacked us by now. Looks a little picked over, but still intact enough. Great. Um, and Flapjack speaks up. Captain, um, I can sense some, um, well, activity on board. My telepathy enhanced by our ship, uh, well, there's things on it. There's something there, something alive. Elena looks back to both of you. Well, that's either really good or really bad. Wait, what makes this? What makes that good? Yeah, in what way? Well, 
perhaps um you know it's just some other friendly pirates and we can just barter for the things we need but it could also be bad in that it's not so friendly pirates we cannot barter for the things that we need well maybe it's just some uh, <clears throat> survivors and in that case we could have maybe some sort of hostage situation uh, very valuable Perhaps, yeah. Um, go ahead and roll me some perception checks. Boom. Oh, I got a... You gave me a boom? Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Four. Very perceptive. Yeah, four <laughs> and 14 for Helene here. Um, as you look out, in the words of hostage situation, you kind of ring out in your ears here. Someone is waving from one of the decks of the ship on the exterior there. You can see him, a young human, ragged, blood-stained clothes, stepping out onto the Nautiloid's battle prow. He's waving his arms, trying to get your attention, and seems to be in some distress. Uh, hey... You got, you guys got, it just starts gesturing. You know that makes you see things? A, a telescope? Oh. A telescope. Sure. You got one of those? Yeah, all right. Sure. There's some, there's, there's somebody doing something over there. Captain Elena will hand you the telescope. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> Ugh. And, uh, looks on, looks on over and, uh, takes a gander. Uh, yeah, you're gandering at the lad. Is it is okay? Can I tell what like human, what race it is? Yes, uh, he is human, uh, young human male, mm -hmm. bloodstained clothes. Um, he looks at you and he looks kind of injured somewhat. It's a little scabbed over, but he does appear to be injured. Uh, his clothes look to be that of like, you know, someone who would be sailing a ship, but ragged, cut up, uh, a bit oh. dirty. Just waving his arms at you here. Short, cropped, brown hair. No, a little bit of stubble around his, his cheeks there, as if he hasn't seen a razor in a while. Hmm. How, uh, do we know... Do we know what happened here? Is that... Did you guys hear anything about what happened to this thing? Uh, no. That was not part of our, uh, brief, unfortunately. There's a there's a young man over there. He doesn't he looks like maybe a survivor. I do we are we supposed to do anything with this? Well, I don't I didn't that's not part of the contract. Well, uh, to be fair, he did say any means necessary. Right. Does did he swallow the gem or something? Cuz if not, I don't really care about him. What what's he doing? I, I don't know, but he is aboard the ship, and it does mean we'll probably have to interact with him at some point. So, should we swing aboard and find out? Um, sure. Right. Just uh, keep your guard up and don't don't let him on the ship yet. I think that's a bad idea. I don't no. know who he is, and I don't really trust him. Uh, Flapjack, can we get above the derelict? lower down our, our rope ladder into their air envelope so we can, um, well, board. I'd like to board on the same uh, deck that he's on there. Flapjack will give a little tentacle salute and maneuver the moon dancer above the nautiloid. A long rope ladder drops out, uh, down and out of the air envelope where it kind of floats a little freely until it enters the one of the Nautiloid ship, where it will then again follow the gravity plane uh, onto the ship. You have this kind of like just straight platform to, you know, kind of maneuver yourself down onto the Nautiloid. All right. Well, here we go. Hey, you! Don't move! Oi! Oh! No, I wouldn't dream of it! Um could really use your help. I've got some hurt friends on board. 
Put your hands behind your head. But like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 boss. Oh, he could have a gun move. taped to the back of his head. If he has, if he pulls out a gun, you shoot him. Can you just stay stay here until I get down there? Okay, stay right here. Look Good through point. the thing. If you if he shoot if he does anything, I I'm trust. I don't I don't know how good your aim is, but I'm trusting with all those guns, you gotta hit at least once, right? All right, shoot him, okay? Uh, understood. Please, he my, we need your help. Who's we? Me and the rest of the crew and oh, we. How how many? Four of us. We, we, there was a group of Niyogi and they came aboard and they slaughtered everyone. Group of what? Wait, what? It looks towards the captain. Oh. What is that? A Niyogi. That's somewhat problematic. There, uh, well, she attempts to describe it to you. I'm going to show it to you and then attempt to describe it to you. Okay. <laughs> um, Niyogi are, well, kind of horrifying. <laughs> um, somewhat a mix between like spider and snake like heads uh they are really they have their own society of things they look like an outside spider with an eel's neck and head um Some starship trooper stuff right there yeah it really is and they can even wear armor as you can see in the picture there come in various different shapes and sizes um but yeah they you know a perfectly capable crew or pirates or anything else. They uh, yeah, usually God. dwell in far-flung locations on the material plane as well as the astral plane and ethereal plane. They left their home world long ago to conquer and devour creatures in other realms. Yeah, they're, they're starship trooper bugs. What the heck? Yeah. Gross. All right. All right. Are the, there's no more here, right? No, wait, wait. Well, we killed him, and, and, but we're just hurt, and we got no way out of here, and the ship's broken, and can't sail anywhere. All right. I'm coming down. All right. Should I still keep my head, my hands behind my head? You betcha. You don't move. Okay. And so you begin to maneuver down the rope there. Elena uh, looks over to Triple Angus. I think I'll be accompanying you on this one. Let's make sure this all goes right. There's quite a lot of money on the other side of this, should we find the things we need. So, you or me first? Well, <clears throat> you go right ahead. I'll uh, I'll keep my gun on the, on the gentleman down there. She gives a nod, and she maneuvers herself onto the rope ladder and begins climbing down and then climbing up as things, you know, change the, the gravity envelope and then climbing down again. It's a bit of a <laughs> weird... Like back and forth <laughs> issue when you're dealing with the gravity of these both these Some different ships. Stuff. Yeah, it really is. Um, so as you make touchdown onto the deck there, Helene, we're gonna take a break, and when we come dun, dun, back, dun. the creepy derelict nautiloid and things of that nature. So those of you at home, thank you so much for tuning in to this particular episode. Our one shot will continue in about in five to ten minutes. Be right back. Welcome back. I watch things load on this side of the screen and it, it gets laggy. Okay, it'll load. It's eventually going to get there. It's fine. <laughs> Welcome back to our Spelljammer one shot where we find our heroes on the wreck of a nautiloid ship. It's a little spooky, a little weird. And uh, there's a guy on board who says that some Niyogi came here and, well, uh, killed a lot of people. As you board the ship onto the deck here, I'm actually going to take us... This works. I hope it does. I hope it doesn't break anything. Always Me the, too. It's always the worry when it comes to these things. Okay. So, I will center you up on where you're at. You're on the... Uh, Yeah, you're on this little prow of the ship where there is a kind of broken up ballista here. It is not as intact as it looks on this particular area, but uh, yeah, it's 
seen better days. The young man here sitting next to you, hands behind his head as he waits for you all to make your way down onto the ship proper. So, as you arrive there, the young man, uh, he attempts to reach out a hand towards you, uh, to shake it in greeting. You do anything? Hey! Uh, what? Don't oh, move! Oh, 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 all right, yeah, mm-hmm. All right, boss, you got it. Uh, the name's, um, Benet Benodo, uh, Kralazar? Hi. Pl 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 pleasure to have you aboard. <laughs> um, I'm looking through. Do I? Can I detect magic? Detect magic is a spell. And so no. Uh, so if you had like cast the spell detect magic, the answer would be yes. Okay. No, I don't. Right. Okay. Um. I don't think I do. Okay. Um. Fine. Uh, I. Helene's gonna. Helene's gonna pat him down. Hey, stay. Uh, 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 right. Give me a sec. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> uh, right. Specifically from the ankles up. From the ankles up. Yeah. Okay. Sure. You pat him down from the ankles up, and and what you'll find is that at, at his belt he does have a dagger, um, like a okay. small belt knife. You know what people would normally carry. He does have one. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, I, I, do, I do have a knife at my belt, so so you're not surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not worried about that. Not worried about that. All right. Do I find anything valuable? Uh, you do not. All right. He's he's not carrying anything. Okay. Uh, so all all the way up, don't find anything valuable. It gives him a little uh, Gucci goo in his armpit. Tickle him a little bit. <laughs> oh, 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 I said don't move. I'm sorry, you tickled me. I'm very ticklish. I'm just kidding. You're good. You're good. You can put your hands down. Uh, right. But yeah, I'm watching you. Right. Uh, no, I would, I would expect that. It's a very weird situation that we're in here. Um. So again, my name's Benoto. Uh, who, who, who are you all? Uh, and why am I so lucky that you're here to help save us? Oh yeah, we're we're um we're part of the rescue crew. Um, we're here to rescue you. Was it aware that mm -hmm. anyone had known that we were? Roll me a deception check. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Ooh, that's a 24. Hey. Oh, oh hey, nice. Baby. That is really good. All right, he's going to insight this here. And... Rescue crew. I, I wasn't sure that anyone was aware that we were that we were out here. Oh, oh blessed day. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> and he starts to cry a little bit. <laughs> They're okay, all okay. They're all dead. You don't understand. They're all dead. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, how how many of you are there? Oh, it's just us. Oh, all right. Well, uh, I do. I have some injured aboard. Some of our, our crewmates. Um, if you, if you would uh, like. Well, about that. Um. Yeah. Uh, we can't do anything for them. But. Well, you mean you can't do anything for them? I mean, we can maybe, uh, pray for them? No, oh, we have some that are just injured. There's some injured. There's, I, I, like I said, there's four of us. And oh. they just, mm -hmm. they killed everyone else. Oh. Oh. Um. Boss, uh, uh, you, yeah, what, you, 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 got a, you got a second here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk What's to you. going on? <laughs> you gotta, like, move to the south side here. Uh, yeah. Elena, Elena nods you and goes, it's all right, son. It's all right. And she'll take him to, like, the north side here and, you know, give him a look over as you go to the south side of the, the platform here. Uh, listen, I had a I had a thought, and this this may be a crazy thought, but, you know, uh, he did say that we could keep whatever we saw that was valuable, right? Yeah. Well, I was just thinking that, you know, you and I loading a ship full of riches would probably take some time but uh, maybe we could get these fine folks to uh help us load it in exchange for a ride mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. that's a good idea and we could just tell that's them good. that uh, you know we're here to recover the cargo as well true 
insurance purposes or whatnot. I don't know how that works. I don't know what that is, but yeah, I think. Um, do you want to? Do you want to tell them? You're, sure, I, I could. I, I could. I'll, I could float the idea. I'll hand it off to you. I'll hand it off to you. Just follow my lead. And we uh, we walk back. Okay. Yeah. You walk back and meet at the center. Elena has a, a you know a hand on the shoulder of the young Bonotto. Uh, hey, yeah. Uh, so so will you will you help? Will you help us? Hey, uh, what what's your name by the way? Uh, Benoto Kralazar. Oh yeah. Um, you're probably gonna have to remind me a few more times. That just just escapes me. Sorry. Um, That's all right. Uh, my one of my my colleagues here had a really good idea, and um, yeah. Anyway, turn I I turn I turn Bonoto towards towards AAA, and I kind of um, you know, grasp his shoulder pretty tightly. Mm-hmm. Well, Do you want to tell him? Tell him. Go ahead. Well, well, uh, you see here, uh, uh, you said you had some injured. How how injured are we talking? Hard to move, that's for sure. But they're they're, they're on one of the decks. Um, above us do, here, and, and, and they definitely have need a, some like splints or, or medicine or bandages, something. Is there is there anyone on the ship that is uh, able-bodied beside yourself? Well, there's a creature below us that we've got locked away in a room. Hmm. Well, okay. So here's the deal is that uh, we were, uh, of course, uh, employed here to uh, to come rescue your ship. But part of the deal is that uh, we were also instructed to, uh, uh, you know, gather the, the important cargo. Uh, so we can help your friends, obviously, but uh, this would go a lot faster if you could help us, uh, you know, take care of the cargo as well. That way we can all get out of here quickly before the ship falls apart. You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh. Um, well, maybe only one of you can come help me, or two, and and the rest you can look in the cargo hold to see if you can find what you need. It, it shouldn't take too well, long, it's, right? It's not really what we need. It's it's just more about you know our employer wants to make sure all the all the valuable items are accounted yeah, for. Not us. Not us. No. Not us. Of course, we don't we don't have a stake in this. So if you would you just I point don't. us to where the uh you know the really valuable stuff is to make sure we get everything you know that way we're not disappointing anybody and you guys get all oh, safe and you're right. we do our job we don't get fired you know what i mean okay yeah yeah, yeah. no you understood yeah. um so uh, um down the, the center stairs here and as you like actually look about here and look at the the stairwells there's three one a, a much longer stair seems to go down into the ship the other two uh land on a, an interior deck that has this, you know, somewhat broken up catapult looking uh, projectile thrower thing. We'll, go, we'll take the, the main stair down, it goes right into the cargo hold, and, and that'll probably have the things you need. Yeah, per- perfect. I think, uh, oh, I think we should, we should get moving then before anything goes wrong, uh, of course, right? Yeah, no, uh, miss, miss, miss Elena, do you, yes. you know, have, can you splint up? These, can you help these people at all? In a former life, I was actually a, a field medic for one of the Empire armies. So yes, in fact, this is right up my alley. And I feel for the boy. It's hard to see your whole crew lost like that. It, it, sh- sure, sure. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, so sad. So sad. <laughs> um. <laughs> she like, she reaches it. She's got like a satchel on here and she reaches into it and she, she opens it up. I thought in case we had some bumps and bruises and scrapes and things, we, you know, might need some medical supplies and, well. Oh, uh. Got some things here. Don't use all of them. I will use what I deem necessary. I am the captain, mm. though you may be in charge of this mission. She Please? Will, she will lead down into the depths here. Do you guys choose to follow with her? Yeah, we want to, wherever the cargo is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's going to take the, the center one down into the cargo hold, knowing, again, this is where you should be, probably. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So as you move into the ship, I'm going to kind of just take us down into an area here and then move you all. You can see a little bit better. The inside of the ship is dimly lit by flickering bioluminescent orbs mounted on the walls and hanging from the ceiling doors that you can see are kind of fleshy looking barriers. This particular room, however, is a little awful. 
The cargo hold looks and smells like a slaughterhouse. Bodies lie strewn Ooh. about the deck. The floor is stained with blood. Most of the bodies appear human, but one is this arachnid form with an eel-like neck and a head that lies as motionless as the others. Gross. The Nodo, as he leads um, you in here, is right. So I told you, it's a little awful, but uh, that's the thing that attacked you right there. That's one of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, roughly, do you know how many there were? It doesn't take many. The yeah, bites that's are kind of uh, what I'm worried about. Horrific and terrifying and painful and. Uh, he starts to tear up a little again. Anyway, um, the stairs here, and he, he points down to yourself, that leads down into the holding cells from the illithids. The stairs over there, well, those are the ones that we'll take up to go assist my crew. I, I wouldn't worry about the big brain pot over there. It's, it's actually been quite destroyed. Um, seems someone mm. set about to stabbing it quite a lot of times. All right. Well, Elena, you, you want to go take care of the roughnecks, and we'll uh, yes, we'll, we'll head down. Excellent. Uh, yeah. She, she looks and she kind of whispers back to you. This looks like the main cargo hold. Take a look around. This is probably where the most valuables are. She will lead with uh, Bonotto here to go uh, up the stairs at the center, and they will they will exit, leaving you to your devices in the uh. center of the room. <laughs> Helene looks at AAA like, do you think we're stupid? Well, yeah, don't... I, yeah I, I don't really know what she meant by that, but uh, we should we should probably look around, right? We, we're on a tight schedule we're, here. We're, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be we'll be fine. We'll be all right. Oh, all fair right. enough. Take a, take a look, AAA. Let's see if we can. I don't know. Get something. We gotta we gotta look for this dang thing. We gotta find yeah find the stone, but uh, keep our eyes out for any other valuables. Mm -hmm. He's gonna. He's gonna go whatever the closest crate is, I guess, between these bodies. Sure. Uh, oh, excuse me, pardon me as he steps over. The <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. As you're like <laughs> kind of taking a look around here, the cargo hold contains 11 human corpses. The arachnid form is obviously that dead Miyogi we were talking about previously. Uh, as you look here, uh, you're going through some of the boxes. The cargo hold here seems to have boxes of food and water stored in crates and casks and it looks like there's probably enough here for maybe 10 you know crew members for about five days and there's a couple of barrels of pickled brains floating in brine yum yum <laughs> um these bodies aren't like they're not oriented as if they were like protecting a specific part, right? They're just all over the place. It seems mostly chaotic, but if you would like to do a little mm. bit closer investigation on the bodies themselves, you can. Two two different things: investigation um, for you know the room here, or medicine mm. for the bodies themselves. Um, we're gonna do a general investigation, I think. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Roll me a general investigation here. Triple uh, A. I assume yeah. you're assisting yeah. in the in the room. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, per light. Look at you. Okay. Not during attack rolls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I think what you what you find here is you're kind of doing just the general run of the room. Here are are the following yeah. things. Most of the boxes and crates here have been picked over. It looks like. This has either been a derelict for some time, or some pirates have gotten to it previously, or, you know, fleeing illithids took things and left with them. There's not a whole lot of valuables in the area here. But, things you do find. The large brain-like thing over here, which would be where most of the illithid tadpoles would exist, if they were to have any, is indeed messed up. Someone had set about to stabbing the ever-living hell out of this thing and making sure that it is very much dead. There are hundreds of dead tadpoles floating inside the pool as well. Very much worked over. Looking at the corpses here, the bodies have circular bite marks on them, including the Niyogi. Several scimitars and crossbows are scattered about the room, but the corpses show no evidence of having been struck by them. The bodies are also in some varying states of decay. 
in the room itself as well, you note that back towards the uh, prow of the ship where you had kind of come in at over on the was that western side of our map, there is a door that has been somewhat sutured shut with chains and belts and boards just closed there. The somewhat fleshy door locked. Hey, uh, hey, Triple, you ever seen, you ever seen holes like these? These big old round ones? Well, uh, <clears throat> no, not particularly, I don't think. Uh, it's, it's a pretty unique situation, I think you would say. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I know any weapons that would, uh, will make this. Um, you seen what I'm seeing? Uh, uh, gestures over towards the door. Yeah, it seems like uh, whatever's in there, uh, somebody didn't want it to get out. Yeah. Could be that trapped uh, creature they were talking about a minute ago. Mm-hmm. Um. Is there any sound coming from that door? Would you like yeah. to go investigate? Yeah, I want to go put my metal yeah. ear up against it. We'll have you gotta like walk over in that direction and you know do a little do a little look around, drag us all over it. Uh, yeah, so this, uh, ooh, we got the right thing here. This sutured closed door. Roll me a perception check. Oh, my perception's bad. Whoops. Okay. There should be like a base <laughs> level of things that you can get. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. As you kind of like look here, the door to this compartment's fastened shut with sutures of ropes, steel hooks, boards, and otherwise just absolutely blocked. You listen, and there is something there. You can hear some shuffling, and then a... Oh! Hey! 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 There's someone... I can hear you out there! Hey! Help! Let me out of this place! They lock me in! Please! I, I, Helene gestures toward AAA with a, with, with a shh finger. Please! Wait! They're not who they say they are! I was trapped here. They're these aberrations. They murdered the crew. Please. Waves, waves AAA away from the door. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kind of like move a little bit away from it. Yeah. Let's get, let's get it. We're going to get away from it. Out, out of earshot, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, we'll, you know, back to the center of the room. It's fine. That's a, yeah. uh, that's a little bit concerning there. Uh, seems like we've got two different stories going on. Mm hmm. One story and another. That's what I meant by two. <laughs> I'm sorry. God damn it. That's so stupid. I'm so sorry. I couldn't help myself. Oh my God. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. That was, that was great. That's some tongue power right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, a scene is that we're not finding too many valuable things here in this cargo bay. Uh, what do you, what do you want to wager that the thing we're looking for might also be in that room? Yeah, I think I think you're right. But who do, who are we gonna who do we talk to? Who are we gonna trust? Like, what do you know anything that could disguise themselves as like those people? Also. Hold on. Is Elena in trouble right now? Well, uh, <clears throat> I, su I suppose she could be. Although I'm um, sure she can take care of herself. Space, space captain and all. As if to punctuate the point, there is a very Elena Sartell scream from upstairs. Oh, well, uh, my opinion has now changed. I believe <laughs> she is in trouble. <laughs> I'd start running, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd start Run running. After. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to kind of move some things around here. So give me a second as Elena Sartell is definitely in trouble. Uh, Classic story. Marooned guy on a spaceship. <laughs> Turns out to be the bad guy. As you run all the way to the top here, there are these creatures surrounding Elena with their weird hands outstretched. And I'll show you what they look like. 
somewhat slug horse-like creatures, round mouths full of teeth, looking at Elena Sartell, and she seems to be psychically bound here. She has fallen to her knees. The screams have stopped, and they are moving closer as if to kill her. Bonoto, standing on the other side, still much looking like the human that he might be, points behind and goes, they're here, they're here! And from that, I'm going to need you to roll me some initiative. Wonderful. Should we have taken a long rest before this? Oh, so yeah, yeah. You, so keep in mind that the health points you have, like write it down somewhere. But like, yeah, you're, this is obviously <clears throat> years previous. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, just, that's what I was just thinking. <laughs> is, there, uh, is there a note okay. section? There's a note section somewhere, right? Yes, there is. On the top of your character sheet, you'll have uh, the like bio little area, and there's like notes in that. Be core bio spells. Oh, 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 oh. You know what I'm saying? Uh, see. Hey? On your character sheet where it says core, bio, and then spells? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on the wrong. If you go to bio, thing. there should be like a little notes, John. Got it. Sick. I was on a different tab. I don't know, just put it anywhere. 34 HP. Okay. okay. For those I'm of us at, at home that might 41. know what these things are, these are called Surlons. They're really weird and terrifying. I just want to know what psychopath has <laughs> drawn the creatures for tonight. Right? Between this and the last one, whose who's imagination are these horrors so, like, from? So these are, are, yeah, these are old monsters, you know, kind of freshened up and made new for the release here. But, like, these are from the OG Spelljammer release. Like, these horrifying-looking creatures. <laughs> okay. Uh, some dune shit. Yeah. Yeah, right. We don't have a whole lot of friends here. I am going to roll Elena onto the list, though she is currently psychically stunned. So at, wow. Our, uh, Aline, you're definitely faster than a Surlon, so you're going to have the initiative here. As you get up to this portion of the deck, um, the, Nau the Nautiloids Bridge has this high ceiling, stairs ascending to a forward observation deck on the north and south side here. Uh, and then on the stern, there are ladders that climb upwards to the top of a, a balcony. There's additionally a door behind you here. There are these three Surlons presence and Bonoto here, who seems to be helping them, though he does appear in totality a human. So, what do you want to do? You said she's being, like, psychically... She seems stunned, right? Yeah, like, so she seems stunned. She has stopped moving. The scream is, like, dead on her mouth as it, like, lies open here. Her eyes rolled back into her head. She's being, like, I'd say psychically bound in that, like, yeah, they're yeah, doing yeah. something to her to make her not move. So I guess my, my question is, does do they look like the picture, like they're holding up a hand towards her or something like that? Or does it, do, is there the any indication that one of them south, might be doing the something? The north and south ones are. Bonotto seems okay. to be is pointing at you with his human hand, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the one to the the closest to you has turned around to face you. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Helene, Helene's initial reaction is to go for one of them, probably the north one. Okay. Um, try to try to just sprint up behind him and uh, and stab her, stab it with uh, her short sword. Okay. Yeah. So as you kind of like maneuver your way around this direction, uh could get to there yeah if you want to i don't get too close to the other one right okay uh i don't know about too close you're gonna pass directly by them but yeah that's what i'm worried about i guess um you could ranged if you wanted to if you want to do like range attack things but Remember, I'm, I'm thinking about i'm thinking about her character and her affinity towards meleeing things okay and if she would have a bow on her um yeah this is this is previous sorry this is previous helene yeah. right like do you yeah. have one she she probably wouldn't have a bow okay um i think she's she's been focusing on on working her magical powers and stuff like that as her her range stuff that's what originally what it was anyway but things changed um yeah. okay uh so uh, in that case we're going to, because I, I don't want to sneak by this guy. I'm going to go to the closest one and, and try to try to stab it. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, you can go ahead and move that direction when you are ready, okay. and then give me the thing. The thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, which one do I want? Yeah, which one this do one. I want? Yeah, an 18 is absolutely going to hit. They are not wearing any form of, of actual armor, but as you push the sword forward, you feel it piercing through what seems to be a magical armor of some kind. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So there is some resistance there, but you're able to push all the way through. Okay. Go ahead and roll me short sword damage. Yeah, for eight piercing damage here. Unfortunately, not triggering any of your sneak attack due to proximity or advantages here, but you do get the eight on the strike. Okay. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Uh, that Sirlon is going to be the one to immediately look back at you here. Uh, it targets you here, because it has not used this ability yet. I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw, Holine, as it attempts to psychically crush your brain. Ah, I don't like that. Yeah. Wisdom, you said? Wisdom saving throw. It's not overly high, but just saving against the psychic crush here uh, for 14 points of damage, halved down to seven. This thing's a Pokemon. Jesus. There you go. Okay. Uh, triple A. Aline has rushed forward, dealt a little bit of damage here, and you watch as she winces and some blood comes from her eyes as her brain attempts to be crushed. Ooh, what color's my blood? What color is your blood, Space Elf? I don't know. I would I would assume... Okay. Space Elf is kind of um, like a... Uh, wow. Not a Vulcan. What's the other one? No, no. Absolutely. Wait. Yeah, not a Vulcan. What's the other one? From Star Trek. I, I forget. Romulan? Anyway, Romulan. Yeah, oh, I think yeah. they both have green blood. But okay. yeah, like a she basically like a Romulan, and it's it's a dark green. Oh, I love that. It contrasts a lot against your your skin and clothes mm -hmm. there too. A green, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, triple A, noting the green blood on Helene here and the still stunned Elena Sartell. What would you like to do? How far are these guys apart? Not overly far. The the bridge no. here, as tall as the ceilings are, is kind of narrow. Okay. Um, I think that. Hmm. I think that AAA will uh. Will uh, open his chest cavity as a, as a, like a cannon shape comes out, uh, and I'm going to uh. I'm going to blast these guys, the two on that side with the... Uh, I think I'm going to do Thunder Wave here. Thunder Wave. I want to position it in a way that it doesn't hit the captain. Okay. Uh, yeah, as a note, I, I didn't include the, the sightline blocks for these. These are stairs that go upwards. Okay. So you would be going up to a different deck and not have visual sight on... Well, I mean, if, if I shoot from here and I position it by the stairs should be okay right uh so it's a square right uh, give me the, the it's a, size it's of a cube it's a circle i believe pretty sure it's a cube. is like it 15 oh, by 15. yeah a cube looks like oh, that you're right it's, oh okay so and that I, was bigger than i thought it would I, be i rule this as well just in case you, you for you is that you can either cast it on center like on yourself or cast it on a face i don't mind if you do like hmm. on a face side here if you were like on this side That'd be fine, or you could cast it from mm -hmm. center for future references. But that's Fair that's enough. about the size of the thing there. I probably won't do that then, if the if that'll. It's pretty big. Hit the captain. If a lady gets out of the way, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> yes. AOE. <laughs> you may wake Instead. her up, but hey, you don't know. Instead, Ooh, yeah, I'll, aim, for, uh... aim for the heart. It'll be like a um, like paddles. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Uh, I will just take a shot with the pistol then i believe uh against which target uh this first one that was helene was against yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and can i use that nat 20 even Gen after rolling generally we say prior to but that's okay. fine uh if you would like to use it now yes you can you can spend your nat 20 i was gonna remind you guys of it on the next turn here uh but yeah so pistol hits and we'll roll the additional damage die after you roll this the pistol i need another d10 Oh, God, come on. Oh, for eight? 
Eight points of damage as the crit here glances off of the weirdly shaped Sirlon creature. What a waste. Oh, oh, uh, tough, 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 tough. Okay, then. Um, bonus action. Uh, since I already got that chest cannon pre primed anyways, uh, I'll, I'll use my force ballista. Absolutely. Um, same same is, target here? Yeah, same okay. target. And that is, uh, I forget what the, the hit on that is, but I know it's 2d8 of force damage. Uh, it is a spell attack. So yeah, whatever oh, right, one of your right. spell attacks is... Uh, Plus eight on my spell attack. Uh, yeah, so it's like if you use scorching ray, it's the same. Yeah, you just want to roll one of them one. Twenty-five to hit. Yeah, that'll that'll do. That'll absolutely do. The twenty-five hits as the force ballista comes out here for six more points uh, of damage. Should be twelve. It rolled those twice for some reason. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't know yeah, just happened absolutely. There. For 12 points of damage there. Um, yeah, as Helene, you watch AAA, true to his word, is just guns. He is multiple <laughs> guns put together. Um, the pistol. Actually, I like, to, yeah, go ahead. I like to think that Force Ballista literally, like, knocks me back off my feet. <laughs> 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 Can't control it yet. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Because it's, what, a third of the size of your body? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> said, oh, 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 just got to install. Got to work out the kinks. <laughs> I want to get up though, and I'm gonna move uh, closer yeah, get a little bit to closer this there. creature. Okay. Absolutely. That way can have that, that, that sneak attack. All right, Elena here uh, with the stun is going to spend the turn stun, and it has to make a wisdom saving throw at the end of it to attempt to break through the stun here. She does not. That is a twelve. The Sirlon, one of the ones that is holding her here on the north side, is going to break his attention away and is going to target Triple A with his psychic crush. Need a wisdom saving throw, triple A. Wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. That's not terrible. Nice. Okay. Both of you. 14 halved down to seven with that. Good save. The secondary one here is going to continue to maintain the hold on uh, Elena and is actually going to physically grab her and start moving her away from you. Kind of down this direction. He's going to spend his whole turn doing that. Bonodo is going to look at you all. Uh, and he goes, You know what? You would have found out eventually anyways. <laughs> but you'll make a great meal for me and my friends. <laughs> and he is going to... Yeah, I guess, you know what? We'll roll for it. Let's see if it's going to be Helene. Because he has the same mm. thing. It's going to be triple A. Helene was one. Hit triple A is two. Triple A. Roll me another wisdom saving throw as Benodo will try to psychically crush you as well. Hit two, Benodo. At two. That is a natural oh, come one on. for a zero on the save. Uh, the 2d8 plus Wolf. three here. Ah, I only rolled eight. Rolled real low Oof. for eight points of damage here. You fail Jokes the on you. save. I don't have a brain. <laughs> yeah, so what does that feel like <laughs> when psychic damage is delivered to you? I, I I think it's just I think my vision just gets all computer glitchy. You know, like like mm. I just lose some some uh, motor function. Like <laughs> just kinda yeah. some blue screens pop up. <laughs> you know like you know like when Robocop is like <laughs> Yeah. I love yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Okay. I think that's it. Uh yeah, at two, Benoto. Helene. Okay. Um, so I, this doesn't matter too much, but I, cause I'm going to do it no matter what sure. does, if I were to, um, starlight step away, mm -hmm. would that trigger a, a, um, attack of opportunity? No, starlight step functions, uh, very much the same as misty step where it just like you okay. teleport from one location to another. Okay, cool. So I see, I see the, the other weird worm thing. They're sir long, sir. Sirloin. Sirloins. Mm hmm. Sirloin, Captain. <laughs> Sir, Captain um, Sirloin. <laughs> Sirloin. Um, and essentially, she's going to appear to step towards the, sir the Sirloin that is closest to her. Yeah. And actually step through her lovely star portal. Okay. And um, appear behind the one dragging Al uh, Elena away. 
Oh, yeah. So, okay. So as this one attempts to, like, bite out at you, and you step through the star portal and poof, poof, all the way across yeah. the ship. But she does, one of the, she does one of these things, like like the um, caught you for flinching thing. She flinches at him. <laughs> <laughs> and you teleport behind the one that's dragging Elena away, and then what? And then I pull out my sword and I stab him. All right. Give me a stab. 17 does hit. Hey, this is this is the hot lady. You don't take her away. For nine. That's a good uh -huh. stab. Uh, again, unfortunately, not triggering any of your sneak attack because Elena is not a threat right now. Uh, and don't have advantages. So nine piercing damage delivered here. But you do get the stab. Okay. Cool. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, left to your own devices here. AAA, this one is going to square up with you, this Sirlon, uh, and is okay. going to attempt to bite and and claw at you. Uh, gets, gets, gets three attacks. One bite, two claws, right? Uh, 11, 5, and 11. Uh, none of those hit. None of those <laughs> hit! <laughs> just, ah, weird round mouth of teeth and just nothing. Absolutely nothing. I like to think that he's clawing and biting at me, not realizing that my body is metal. <laughs> yeah, just like <laughs> kind of scraping like... against you. <laughs> oh. You mind getting your mouth off me? Or... Who's <laughs> scraping their fork against the plate? <laughs> I hate it. Stop it. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yes. Uh, this leads us to AAA and your response. Well, now that, now that everyone's out of the way, uh, as he's that is coming in to bite me. I'm just, uh, I'm imagining I'm biting the barrel of my chest cannon. Mm -hmm. And then I want to cast that thunder wave now. Absolutely. In the 15. So I think it should be able to hit three of them without hitting uh, the captain there. You should be able to. I'm trying to fix uh, your camera. And it is fucking me all sideways here. I got it. We're good. What's it doing? Oh, it was me. It's OBS just doing weird shit. It's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Yes. Uh, yeah, you can do that now. The big square of this. I don't think you've done this in the in the campaign before. So what does this look like when you do it? Uh, it currently hits two from your your location here. Uh, is there anywhere that you want to try? Ooh, I think that's well, a, I'll take a if I could take a step forward then. If you take the step forward and cast it, remember you cast on a face or around your person. So you could go in the middle and cast around you and hit all. Right, let's do it then. Okay, sure. You know, position yourself in between all of this nonsense here, and then if it would let me grab anything, which it's not, uh, you would be able to kind of around you hit just about everyone. Perfect. Nice. Okay, cool. I'll, uh, so, I'll just kind of turn him around while his mouth is on my cannon, and then just, uh, I, I imagine it's just like a uh, kind of like static electricity kind of off of the my whole body. It says it kind of like sparks and stuff. And then uh, as that charge kind of builds up, um, just like dissipates all at once. Mm -hmm. It just leaves like just poof, just a big like shock wave of, uh, of kind of sound and force. Okay. As yeah. The discharging of that electricity. And as it discharges here, uh, I have to roll some con saves and you can go yes. ahead and roll me the spell. Uh, 16 is the save. Uh, let me find the spell there. There it is. Did it not hmm. roll? Not yet. Oh, there we go. There it goes. It's coming. There it goes. Are we higher level casting this? Yeah, second level. Okay. Yeah, for 10 points of damage, DC 16 save. Only one will save, which is this one right here. So he saves and takes half damage here at five and does not get blasted backwards. But the other two, however, are going to get forced backwards by the blast uh one of them knocking into elena sartell benoto getting knocked into elena taking the 10 points of damage here okay well and then i guess bonus action i'll use that uh that uh, arcane uh or the force ballista to uh, attack the one that's close to me yes so uh in the in the melee here because he, this is a ranged spell attack, and you're making it oh, yeah. at melee, it is at disadvantage, but you can still make the attack. Let's do it. Let's okay. roll this one twice, because I got it typed up here. 
Perfect. Uh, 10 and 11, unfortunately, both of oh. these. I think, like, as you, like, try to spin around after blasting outwards here, he's able to dodge out of the way of the Force Ballista as it explodes towards, you know, this side. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, Elena spends her turn. Stunned. Let's see. You know what? She gets knocked into it. I'll give her advantage on this. Mm. Bump on the head. Wake you up. Yeah. yeah. She gets bumped. And you know what? It does. Elena Sartell. She does not get an action on this turn because she spends it trying to get out of the damn trance. But she is awake. Now she looks around. She goes, what the? Anoto? What's going on here? And she looks around and you're all under attack. Uh, anyone alert her to the situation? Hey, beautiful. They're bad guys. Right. Well, stupid them. They left me with my sword. And she will draw her blade and be ready. All right. Uh, on that note, the Northern Sirlon just getting blown backwards is going to rush at AAA. Now on either side Shit. of you here, uh, going to bite claw and claw. Uh, one claw will miss. The second claw is a 15 to hit, and the bite is a 23. Can I reaction shield? You absolutely can. Then so, I will. Yeah, one so of those will miss. Eat the claw here on the magical shield with your uh, sorry. Yeah, on the magical nice. shield, and then the bite will find its way through here for eight points of piercing damage. Okay. That's a beefy one. Yes. I like our little conga line going on here. I know. Everyone's in a straight line. This is great. <laughs> uh, this Sirlon here, as Elena wakes up, is going to divvy up some attacks, because now he's a little, you know, on either side, uh, is going to bite out at Helene and double claw towards Elena. The bite is a 20, the claw, 19 and 10. Uh, Elena's gonna take the five from the claw there. The bite at a 20, Elena is going to deal four points of piercing damage. Okay. Bonoto uh, looks back, he goes, <laughs> I'd say I'm sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> and he's going to, uh, well, pull out a little knife and make an attack here against Elena. Benoto. Gonna slash out at her a couple of times. Whew. He's gonna miss both. Good, 14 and five. Unable to get to her there. All right, Helene. This motherfucker. Always always somebody to betray us always somebody to be a jerk starts getting mad um <laughs> brr, super saiyan up maybe if she tries hard enough <laughs> she concentrates um ooh i'm i'm interested to see if this is a thing that might work um can i can i try putting this guy to sleep the one next to me? With what, dear Liza? With uh, my level one spell, sleep. The core guy. Uh, so as as a as a note. Does that uh, not work that way? Sleep affects an entire area. Will affect oh. the lowest HP creature first, and only affects a certain amount of total hit points that you roll. Mm. So it is not a That's targeted to... thing. Yeah, I was trying to read this, but I guess it's not a really... Okay. Uh, mm, all right. Well, then, we're going to we're gonna not make the mistake we've been making. Not really a mistake. It's kind of out of necessity. We're just going to stay right here, plant our feet, and we're going to focus really hard and steadily aim my sword into the... I love it. Freaking weird worm yeah, creature. Yeah, the weird Sirlon thing. With advantage, go ahead and roll your short sword. With this, you will get your... <laughs> Remember, you also have a nat 20 if you ever want to spend it. Um, True. 22 does indeed hit. Go ahead and roll the damage for that there with sneak attack. Uh, Wait, how do I do it with sneak attack? Uh, so on your sheet, there should be a button that you can either add to. I'm opening your sheet here. Uh, you see underneath where you clicked all, all of your weapons, there's a button there that says yes. sneak attack, and you can turn it on. And so when you roll the damage, it'll just apply that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 
uh, where I clicked on my weapons. There's a sneak attack there? Yeah, if you go, if so, attacks and spellcasting box. Just scroll all the way down it, and there's a global damage modifier field there with sneak attack written in. Oh, 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 oh. And there's a little button there that you can turn I on. I see, I see. You checked it. Got it. Okay, now I click so the now, thing. So now, when you click short sword there, it automatically adds the 13 Jesus points of Christ. sneak attack. Damn right. <laughs> for 17 total points of damage. Big it one. slams home. Absolutely. Yeah. And the Sirlon screams. You see what you do there? Is you you got to plant your feet. You got to plant your feet. Screeches out psychically as it reverberates in the nautiloid. All right, excellent, Helene. That I mean, that's the turn. When you use your uh, your bonus action like that, that's it. You get one big hit. Uh, yep. This one here, Triple A, uh, is going to again try to psychically crush you. Please roll me a Wisdom saving throw. Yeah, he would. He is. <laughs> Are they not like? Do they do they not see that it's a robot? I yeah, don't, don't have a brain, but it keeps working. So that's yeah, ten that's points true. of psychic damage. Good God! Just, just holding a counties. magnet up to his head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. His vision flickering here. Triple A in a dire situation. What would you like to do? Well, uh, I think uh, I would like to cast cure wounds on myself. Okay. Uh, mm. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that. All right. Uh, where's it at? Second level. Did it let me choose? Should. Uh, if you do it from, oh, I sorry, think the, it was, the spell book. It was just lagging a bit. It. Yeah. Nice. A higher hey. upper level. Can oh, for 19. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's a big one there. I love seeing the cure wounds, like, with the intelligence bonus applied, which is just yep. wild. That's, Yeah. 19 Ooh. total points of cure wounds. God, what does that look like, Triple A? Triple uh, A actually, uh, well, uh, you made me do it, but uh, seems like we got to fortify ourselves as he's going to uh, start, his body starts shifting and like m the pieces start moving around again. And he's just going to like, uh, kind of like Iron Man himself up or like these plates just kind of come out of nowhere. Just ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> As he nice. just fortifies his body. Fortify the body. Awesome. Okay. And then, that is uh, action. You have bonus action and movement remaining should you like to use it. Bonus action. I suppose we will try that uh, that uh, ballista again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at disadvantage on the same one I've been been pounding on. Okay. Uh, so With disadvantage there. And yep. let's see how it goes. Oh, that's, I forgot to do disadvantage. Oops. First one. 14 will just miss as it glances no. off the magical armor that they have on you would note this now triple a if you've been fighting they are all like wearing some kind of mage armor so it's like yeah. it's this small magical force that kind of deflects things Dang. okay elena sartell is active she is going to do that where she has her scimitar here uh and she's going to make two attacks one against the Sirlon, one against Bonotto. The Sirlon uh, will miss. She rolls a natural one on that, but on Bonotto here, that is a 17 to hit. Uh, she'll hit for six slashing damage as she does so. Okay. The Sirlons that are over here, AAA. We're gonna a little, get a little dynamic with her, I'm move around. Uh, this Sirlon is going to bite Claw Claw against you. The bite is going to miss. One of the claws is going to miss. The last claw is a 23 to hit, but will only hit for three slashing damage. Woo. Yeah. Thank God. This one here is going to look at Helene after getting stabbed like that and attempt to crush your brain. I need a wisdom saving throw. Don't crush my brain. Crushing the brain. <laughs> Ooh, good save. Ooh, All right, you'll take, take the half that. of the 2d8 plus three. So 14 half down to, to seven. Nicely okay. done. Noto here is going to also kind of dance off to the side of Elena and attempt to stab out at her again. A couple of dagger attacks. A four and a three. You know what? If there's any... Bonotto sucks. Good for him. Helene! This guy needs to just die. Um, yep. There's nothing crazy I can do. Because I want to help AAA over here, but I also don't want to leave her behind. 
Yeah. Um, we gotta just we gotta just stab him again. We gotta we gotta yeah, plant our one feet. of these guys has to die, right? Like that's yeah, yeah. yeah. You think so? I, he's gotta he's gotta have a pretty nasty wound from the last one. So we're we're just gonna we're gonna try to just hit him again. Okay. All right. Give me With the advantage. That and that. Twenty-one absolutely hits. Roll that with the sneak attack. Go get him. Get him for twenty points of damage, and oh. it is. It's enough. This one finally goes down as the short sword sinks into its long eel-like neck, uh, straight into it. You big gobbledygook worm! Little, oh, little psychic damage scream there as he does so. Ow. I accidentally Ow. sent him to the shadow realm, so that's on my bad. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'll fix it. One of these days. All right. Wait, did that hurt? That hurt us? No, you're good. I just okay. sent everything to the shadow realm. Uh, we're in space. Yeah, we're in space. You're in space now. I have layers of things here that are just not functioning correctly now. So don't worry. Uh -oh. I know. It's fine. <laughs> so, is there anything else that you would like to do, Helene? I don't think I can. I'm good. All right. I will remember that for next time and not touch those layers. God damn. Uh, okay. Sirlon here up at the front. Triple A. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, God, they want you dead, man. This is it. Um, let's see. Do I have anything else that I could do here? Nope. Claw and bite. 20, 22, and 16. Triple A. I'm gonna reaction shield again. Okay. So only only the twenty two is gonna hit. Okay. Good, good idea. Wait, wait, sorry, no, the twenty will hit as well. Oof. Okay. Twenty and the twenty two. Fortunately, the bite was the big one at ten piercing damage will be blocked. The two claw attacks are six and three for nine total. Okay. Triple A. The one in front of you here is definitely very much injured. Right. This one has the yeah. one up to your north has seen much less damage. But this one here is desperately fighting out at you. Okay, let's see what I can do here. Oof. Um don't have it. Okay. Man, bad spot here. Wish I could, wish I could move. Um yeah, one of these guys has to die for that to happen. <laughs> I think I can... Uh, I'm going to cast another Thunder Wave, I think. Okay. Yeah, because I can get both these guys around me. I, I don't think I'm hitting anybody else, right? No, okay. All right. Um, so I will cast that Thunder Wave, first level. Does a 16 con save. Yeah, okay. Double content. Seven and eight. They'll both yeah. take the 11. This guy gets blasted backwards, slamming into the stairs here and dies. This one here, blown back from you as well, taking the 11 points of damage. All right. Okay. And uh, nice. now I'll hit him with my force ballista. Yeah, now they're away from you. Go for it. Yeah. 16. Does hit. Roll me that damage. 10 more. 10 more points of damage. Yeah, and now this one here, absolutely bloodied. Very hurt. Love that. Okay, triple A. You have space to move now, too. Yeah, I, I like to think that that's uh, as I kind of charge up again and just let off a shock like the uh, the, the Black Panther suit. Mm -hmm. uh, I then, uh, with my Force Ballista, because I was facing this other one, I like to think that just the top half of my body completely whips around with this giant cannon sticking out of my chest and then blast the other guy. Boom! Yeah, absolutely. And then I turn my legs back around uh, <laughs> and I'm actually going to run over here up by the captain, I think. Yeah. Just to, just to be in mm -hmm. range here. And Elena has her full attention on Bonotto, right? Can't believe we were going to help you. I thought, I thought, yes, we'll help this young boy. We'll, we'll help his crew. No, never again. Never trusting again. And she stabs him for nine points of damage. He is very injured. Uh, okay. Sirlon back here. 
going to kind of weakly raise a hand and attempt to crush the mind of Triple A. It has to be the psychic stuff when I got shield. Always, up. always. You just blew him back into a wall. He don't oh. want to move. Oh, good save! Natural twenty on that. Woo. Uh, the mind is a steel trap. <laughs> we'll deal. Fort Knox. Well, so it'll be six points of damage there. Excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah. But Noto looks up at Elena and gives this smile. He's bleeding from all these different places. Like, <laughs> it was worth it for a meal. I'm gonna use my natural twenty. Uh, oh. To psychically crush Elena Sartell. Wow. So she is going to take 48 plus 3 psychic damage. It's going to amount to 21 total points of damage. Uh, yeah, and that hurts her a lot. Elena Sartell hits the ground. She can't die. She's got plot armor. You just, you'd think that, <laughs> but she's down. And he laughs. And he looks over at Triple A and goes, <laughs> You're next. Helene, what are you doing? Stunned. Stunned by this terrible, terrible tragedy. Things are going badly. Helene's also going to use her natural 20. Yes. And run with a raging fire in her eyes. It's almost like her deep black eyes become bright and yellow and fiery. <laughs> almost. You almost. imagine it when you see how mad she is. <laughs> And just run straight at this, uh, at Bonotto being an absolute jerk face. Yes. With her short sword and, uh, you know, aims for the head. Just going okay. to try to lop it off. Runs forward, hit the, uh, the button just for the damage here. Uh, and you're gonna, you're gonna click it twice. You're gonna do short sword with sneak attack on and click it twice. Oh, yeah. Okay. So oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, click the, the short oh. sword button there for oh, the damage. Oh, I thought it was. The Whoops. damage. The damage. Yeah, there you go. That's one, and then do it again. There we go. Ouch. We're going to subtract uh, three from this, but yeah, that was relatively low on that. So, it's 12, uh, 21, 26, minus 23 total points of damage, which is, however, enough to drive the hey. sword home through the neck, severing it from the body. Bonotto collapses to the ground, gurgling a laugh as the head rolls away. You see how the steam rises from the body, boss? I see. Ah, that, hey. Get it now? Hey, I get hey. it now. <laughs> Excellent. I saw red there for a second. I couldn't, I don't know what's happening. Uh, with that, triple A, one Sirlon remains. Again, weak hand looking at you, having just psychically damaged your parts. What do you want to do? But I love my parts. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> so you said uh, Benoto's head came off? Yes, it is on the ground. Oh, well, then I'm casting Catapult on it. <laughs> 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 oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. You cast Catapult on it yeah, and hurl it yeah. at the Zerlon. <laughs> Oh! Nice. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm actually gonna take my gun and shoot at the ground, like where the head with like an, a force blast, yeah, to like pop it up at him. And so that's a DC 16 Dex save. I rolled a natural one. Oh! oh. It's going to slam into him for 15 points of damage, splattering him. The bones lodging into various different places as he gets smashed <laughs> by the skull of the once Bonotto. As I as I shoot that and it uh, heads up. <laughs> I hate it so much. It's so good. It's so good. Combat comes to a close as the Sirlons have been slain here on the deck of the derelict ship. Elena is still on the ground. Uh, she has to roll a death save here before there's anything else that can be done. So we're going to see how that goes. Not good is the answer. Oh no. Uh the so, Helene or Triple A, is there anything that you would like to do to stabilize or heal her? I can cast cure wounds. Yeah, I, was, I don't know what I can do. Okay. Go ahead and give me a cure wounds. Is 
There it is. Nice. A nice little nine. She coughs and sputters herself awake here. <laughs> well, uh, did we win? Well, well, we didn't lose. I think we got to head up. Good sign. <laughs> Good sign. She looks around. That bastard. Spits on Bonotto's body. Where did his head go? Oh. And his head's just lodged face first in the other sirlon on the wall. I don't think I want to know how that happened. That's a little improvisation. Mm. 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 Well, here, yeah, come yeah. here. I don't know much about circuits, but I know a little bit about healing. And she's going to attempt to help you, Triple A. She has the healer's feet. Oh. So she's just going to do a little bit of this. Oh, well, it's a little weak. So it'll be one plus her three, so four plus your level. So you'll recover 10 HP here. And she'll look terrible. back at, at Helene. Just, I got one for you, should you need it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm okay, and if you want to save it. No, shut I'm, up. Oh, it'll be oh, okay. Nine plus this, so 14 recovered, Helene. Okay. She patches you up in you know, various stab wounds. She also hands you both like a pill. She looks at Triple A. I don't know if this is going to help you, but it should help with the headache for those of us with flesh and bone. Yeah, that 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 would be better. Right. Um. So what the fuck, the, huh? <laughs> uh. So there there was something upstairs you might want to see. Up or down? Because upstairs looks like we've got this deck. Oh, wait, no, downstairs. Oh, uh, yeah, it was the down ladders. in the cargo hold. Yeah, 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 downstairs. All right. Um, I do want to check something, though. The um, Nautiloids, their command decks, and she's going to, like, start walking down this way towards the ladders. If we go up on top there, perhaps their spell jamming helm is still intact. And if it is, we may be able to sail this vessel out of here. She's just going to kind of walk over this way and yeah, we're going to go up the ladder to the, uh, to the top side. There's a, a bit of a, a deck in between a set of stairs. Eventually you find yourself at the top of said stairs and the command deck, uh, which now I need to get all of my notes for that back out. Huh? So up on this area here, there is an impressive chair posed at the end of this catwalk, and its occupant would be able to look out and down on, on over to the bridge or the rest space beyond. Green glowing maggots crawl over the chair's current occupant, which is a headless mind flayer corpse. Gross. Elena kind of takes a look and says, Well, she pokes around the chair a little bit. No, whoever worked this over, kind of, uh, well, chair's no good. Unfortunately, that means no sailing out of here on this thing. Uh, anyway, sorry, I, I interrupted you about the thing down below. Uh, did you find the stone? I think, you know, we're here for? Well, we found well, someone who might know. Yeah, we were about to, and then there was this thing, person, behind a weird door? Uh, I don't... A weird door. It's probably better if we show you. All right. Let me just, um... Let me just check his pockets, I guess. She, like, kind of brushes off some of the maggots. Starts looking in there. Gross. Reaches in to the robes. Oh, whoever did this was brutal but not efficient. Pulls out a purple stone. Oh. Interesting. Guess well. we can just leave that guy, then. I suppose we could, but I am interested. Remember, whatever other riches are on board are ours. That's a good point. Yeah. It's probably locked in there sitting on the good stuff. Yeah, I didn't see anything in the boxes or anything. It was just a bunch of... You check the floor below or Ooh. no? No, we just... We, we, were, we were about to, and then all of a sudden, you were screaming, and we had to come... You know, I did not... Stress. I assure you. you, I did not scream. I, I have a perfect recollection, and uh, according to my memory banks, you did. Hey, Triple A, do you have like a, do you have a video we can I show? I liked you, Triple A. Shut up. I'd like to believe I have some sort of playback system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it perfectly rendered. You open your mouth, and you're just like, 
<laughs> just <laughs> perfect. And she goes, fuck you, AAA. <laughs> well, uh, uh, you've been through a traumatic experiment, so I'm going to let that one go. Uh, she smiles at you. Thank you for the help. I don't think I said that yet. And fuck Benoto, huh? Mm, yeah, that guy sucked. He was I knew it from the beginning. Sucks. Yeah, right. we all... I told you he was going to have a gun taped to his head or something. Right. Something. He definitely had something. Well, all right. Down to the cargo hold then. Uh, let's see if we can't find anything. There's an in-between deck as well if we want to stop there. Probably something. Well. I take a, yeah, I want to take a peek. Just look around. Yeah, just like at, at the decks that are here. Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, like, the, the mid-deck area here, so you kind of go out to that portion and take a look around. There's a couple of these fleshy-looking doors, some more boxes and things that haven't been looked through, um, and otherwise. You want to roll me some uh, investigation checks? Mm -hmm. Yup. Yup. Yup, 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 yup. Ooh, mm. triple. I see everything. I see everything. Nice. What do you um, see with your robot eyes? <laughs> the matrix is all around us. Yeah. Um, so, looking through some of the boxes here, there is, well, not a whole lot, but the doors do lead into what look to be previous occupant rooms. Now, illithids don't necessarily sleep in beds, but those that they create into thralls do. Uh, but you do find in one of these boxes here, a spare um, breastplate. It is very finely made and has these tentacles embossed across it. Uh oh. In another box, there is a spell scroll. Kind of fun. Spell scroll of Wall of Force. Oh. Uh oh. Nice. Thing. Well, breastplate looks nice. No actual money, though. Bell scroll could be sold for something. A couple hundred mm -hmm. gold pieces, I guess. Not too bad. We continue on. Oh, yeah. 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 Suppose take, there's uh, more take, loot down there. Right. Take those with us, sir. Yeah. So you have uh, a breastplate plus one, uh, which is nice, but it is also very much a like mind flare piece of arm armor in that it's mm -hmm. just like got tentacles all over it yum yeah right heading back down into the storage compartment so something that you wanted to show me down here yep it's right over there also i'm pretty sure they know we're here i don't know if they're still alive but there was a person in there a person well, we think it was or, a person. Or a recording? I don't know. There was a voice. A voice? The what? Behind the weirdly sutured up door? Yup. Yeah, that's the one. Yup. Oh, Alright, well. Gotta just walk over that direction and... So... Careful! Yeah, I mean... With you... With her, she goes, So... What then? And then from inside... Ah! Oh! You came back! Oh, you came back! Please! Let me out of here! There are monsters aboard the ship! I told you. Oh, that is odd. Yeah, should we let him out? Who, who, who are you? What do you mean, who am I? I you just let yeah, me yeah. out, I'm trapped! Are you- we just My name got is Jasper Graves, please! Did ring a bell? Nobody sounds trustworthy. Yeah, like he, Elena shrugged. That's a, rich, that's a rich name. No, if he's rich. How did you get on board? <laughs> we were pirates. We came on board to, to rob the place. Everyone died. Some Neogi raiders came and got us as well. It was awful. Oh, we just wanted to pick through the riches. Did you know who those guys were? They were we just kind of murdered? The weird worm things? Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm telling yeah, yeah. you. The monsters. Yeah, we killed them. They're gone. Oh, dear Lord, thank you. Oh, now but let how me do we trust you? you? Oh, I don't know. Just let me out. Is it only one of you? 
I, it's just the one of me. Well, guys, what do you think? Well, uh, uh, I say there could be something valuable back there. And mm -hmm. if this guy gives us any trouble, we just blast him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Triple eight, pull out your cannon and be ready. Still out. <laughs> yeah, it's just like right. holding it out here. <laughs> guns have been <laughs> ready. Be ready. The guns are being ready. And then, uh, yeah, I guess I take my dagger and start cutting the sutures. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, you start cutting it off. It takes about a minute of effort. And then all the sutures kind of like lay to the side here, all the ropes and things. The door can be opened. Uh, be ready, Triple I'm pulling this open. Uh, I got your back, boss. Uh, you <laughs> open the door, and there is an absolute monstrosity on the other oh, side. Jesus Christ. Holding a humanoid brain in its claw-like hands. It's this weird brain-looking fish with arachnid-like appendages attached to it, and it goes... <gasps> and I need you to roll me initiative. I shut the door. Oh, quickly. God. Yeah, do you just want to shut the door? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to shut the door? door? Suture back up? Yeah, you shut the door, and it goes rushing towards the door. You slam it shut here. Kick it. And, Kick the uh, door. And it goes good. <laughs> and Elena's like, no, 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 and just starts grabbing the ropes and starts holding it together. <laughs> um, and as the door slams closed, I mean, if that's going to be the case, that's the end of the show. Oh, <laughs> As oh, uh, we, we end there. and Not getting paid enough for this. Yeah, not getting nope. paid enough. <laughs> Able to find the stones, kill the Sirlon, save Elena, and maybe perhaps escape uh, the Nathalgu. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Um, this weird brain fish monster creature that was still on board the ship. Was it using the human brain to talk? Uh, Is that how it works? Uh, no, but it was eating it. Oh, God. <laughs> I really, I really like that we just close the door and like freeze frame like an Ocean's Eleven yes, film. That's exactly <laughs> it, man. Come on. Hey, if there's one thing that I, I want to do with the show is stay on theme of like random heist <laughs> shit and just keep doing that. We don't give a shit about that. <laughs> And we're done. So <laughs> thank you everyone at home for joining us for this one little, this little one shot adventure of some background on how uh, Helene and AAA met a bit of an adventure with uh, Captain Elena Sartell. Uh, and for, for that, that's, that's it for me. And let's do some shout outs. So Drew Mudcat, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me here on Twitch at uh, Mudcat or Mudcat TV uh, on socials. Uh, but more importantly, you can find me D20 Deathmatch everywhere for some D&D &D PvP action. And metal. So and much metal. metal. So much metal. So much metal. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. Dan, Danitage, where can people find you on the internet? Hello, I'm Dan, nor Danitage, or Dano, whatever, the, the other guy with the mustache. Um... <laughs> Yeah, you can find me at Danotaj. I mean, that's literally everywhere uh, that media is pretty much consumed uh, via content creators. Mm. Um, yeah, I, tonight we're starting up uh, Callisto Protocol, so that'll be fun. I got some, you know, things to give away. We'll see. But uh, I've been playing a lot of different stuff. Uh, Joel and I jammed on some uh, Call of Duty recently. Mm -hmm. nice. uh, so that was super fun. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, catch me on YouTube and Twitch and, and all the things. Yes. Yes, excellent. Uh, I'm Joel. I've been your DM. This is my channel. Thank you for joining us on Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to, you know, probably jump back into the regular Spelljammer campaign next Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern time here on this channel. If, you know, things don't explode because travel, holidays, and otherwise, it, everything is hard to schedule. But uh, with that being said, thank you for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.